Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to answer an important question which has been asked by a viewer of the channel and this is how you publish without an affiliation. Now, in case you are publishing any paper, specifically journal papers, even conference papers, maybe even writing a book or a book chapter, what happens is that you have not only got to give your name but you have to got to give your affiliation. And this means that the place where you are working, where your research is being conducted and so on. So of course, people who work in universities don't have a problem with this. They simply mention whatever job they have at the university. They also mention the university name and the address. And that's the location, which is actually the place where the journal can contact them. Now, more importantly, actually, they also need to have an email from this particular place. So this mail is actually used to verify the veracity of this particular person. So very often when you set up an account with a journal, you have to log in into the system. You have to give your name, you have to give your address, you have to give your email and so on. And then they are going to set up an account for you, but they are going to verify your email by sending some link there, some information there, and then you have to click on that to verify your actual location at a given time. Now, of course, what happens if you are not affiliated to a place and this frequently happens with people or I should say infrequently happens with people when they leave their university or institute and maybe they are not employed for a period of time. So what do you do in this case? Now, the answer to this question, of course, depends on what is your current position in the society in terms of age and so on. So the answer is going to be very different for somebody who is a young person relative to somebody who is a retired person, who is a middle-aged person, mid-career person and so on. So I'm going to give you six different points in this video and then we are going to look at all the possibilities. Now, of course, the important thing to keep in mind is that in any journal system, you have to put in the affiliation there. So one thing you can do is that you can become an adjunct teacher or professor at a college. And many colleges actually let you teach one course or even less than one course, maybe half a course. And what you can do with this is that you can get an email at that particular college and also you can say you are an adjunct faculty at that college and this essentially lets you get an affiliation which you can use to publish a paper. And the second thing which you can do is that you can work part time at any research institution. Now, there are many research institutions out there, not only government labs, but also private sector lab, research clinics, medical establishments and so on. And you can do some part time work here. You can work in the project of some scientist. And then what you can do is that you can again get an email from this institution. And so you will essentially be affiliated to this institution, even if you are not working full time. Now, of course, do make sure that you tell the people at the institution concerned that you are writing the paper and you are submitting it because there may be some policies in any university or any research institution about submitting papers from there. So there may be issues involved relating to copyright and so on. Now, the third thing which you could do is you could publish with your PhD advisor. And this is for somebody who is not working for some period of time. So this sometimes happens with women who have left the workforce. Maybe they had children and they have been staying at home. And so if you feel that you want to do some research, then you can contact your old or I should say former PhD supervisor and you can ask this person that you maybe want to publish some paper out of your thesis or maybe you want to do some work with him or her. And then you could always say that you were a former student at this particular institute or university. So again, if the advisor lets you say that, you can certainly go ahead and submit the paper like this. Now, the next thing which you can do, and this is for people who have retired from certain ranks or positions, so what happens is that if you have retired as a professor, as an associate professor, as a college teacher, even if you were in the military, you retired as a wing commander or major, or maybe you were a scientist somewhere, you have retired in some rank as a senior research scientist or an assistant research scientist, then you could say that you were a former professor, retired professor, former research scientist, or you were a wing commander retired, and then you can write your paper like this. So again, you may in some cases have to 
take the permission of your previous institute. But the fact that you are mentioning that you are former, you are retired actually makes it quite clear to the journal involved that you are not actually currently working there. So this was your past designation, but this sometime does confer some importance to you because the issue is that if you are writing in a completely unaffiliated manner, which I'm going to come in point number seven, then sometimes the journal, the editors may not take your paper very seriously because that's something which they have to factor in. Now, the next thing you can do is that you can probably use the fact that you are in some professional society. Maybe you are a fellow, an associate fellow, maybe a member, a senior member of some society. And so you could write that that is your designation and you can give your home address here. So the fact that you have reached some level of fellowship or associate fellowship of a society may give importance to your credibility and the paper may go through in that particular journal or at least it will be accepted for review in some cases. Finally, number sixth point is that you could create your own company and this not only is possible for senior people, but I have even seen people who have finished their BTEC degrees and they have started their company. So in fact, I had a summer intern like this. So when I asked him, what is he doing now? He said, I've started my company. So in fact, we were writing a paper and we continued to do so. And this guy actually put himself as founder of that particular company. So this is again something which is possible. Now, many people think this is very difficult to do, but actually starting a company is not a very difficult exercise in most countries which are relatively business friendly you can start a company without too much problem so you can inquire about this particular fact you can search in google about how to start a company in many situations you can start a company just by yourself so there are certain types of companies for example in us there is the limited liability company which you can essentially start just by yourself and in that case that is something you can do and you can create a consultancy around that now, finally, the number seven, which is a bonus point, or I should say, which is the fallback case, is that you publish your paper as an independent researcher. You can call yourself a consultant. You can call yourself a technical expert and so on. And you can just specify your home address as your location. Now, of course, in this case, it may be that the paper may get accepted or not. Now, there are many fields, for example, in computer science and so on where people actually do not mind this kind of situation because the startup culture is very much there and there are nowadays a lot of people who are actually working as what are known as fractional scientists or fractional scholars so these people spend their time maybe doing something else but then on their part time they may be doing something else maybe they are training a neural network based on some data they have in the public domain and they want to publish a paper on that so again you may want to start a company but if you feel you do not want to start a company that entails too much expense and complexity then you can submit your paper by saying you and are an independent researcher independent scholar and so on and maybe if the journal is broad-minded enough they are going to accept your paper here now in most cases if the paper looks very good if it is well written out then they may send the paper for review and there are a lot of people who actually have published their paper in this way. If you are one of those people, please leave a link in the comment section or give your comments in the comment section about how you have published without any affiliation to a particular university, company, research lab and so on. So this was my video for today. If you need more advice about how to publish papers, you can look at my writing paper playlist and I will put some videos on the end screen also which will help you in the art of writing papers.